Chloe again. We're seeing a lot of each other lately. Okay, what do we got going on here? Got through a few of these. Now we're on to, we have a 170 with a barn chain issue. 271 that won't start. A 170 that won't quit. 271 with a clutch issue. And a 290 that won't start. We're going to start here with this 271 that won't start. I'll meet you over at the workbench. Welcome back to my workbench. Today we have the steel MS 271 on the bench. The customer says that it will not start. We're going to find out why. So I looked back through my records and I sold this saw brand new four years ago. In those four years, I have sold this man probably 15 bars for this, more chains than that, and sprockets. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure what he's doing to, to need so many bars. But here we are with it, uh, broken brake handle, the operator presence lever is missing. It looks like this saw has had a rough four years. Too bad it didn't have an hour meter. So let's do a quick little walk around in this saw. Just the things that are visible to me. So it came in with no chain. The bar is pooched. It's very sharp and burry. I'm going to remove this before I cut my hand off on it. The bar nuts, he must polish his nuts because they're shinier than the rest of this saw. The emblem's missing. We already talked about this being broken, this being missing. Probably done a lot of work with this. So this bar, the grooves are, are widened right out. So it's done and it's sharp. So I'm gonna get this off right now. I don't wanna cut myself. I don't wanna cut my clothes. Polish nuts. So one of the clutch cover is very clean, cleaner than I usually see. So he must clean this. This has been replaced recently, but it's showing wear again. Chain catcher is intact. It's been hit hard a few times with the chain. There's a bit of a hole there in the plastic. Looks like a chain flies off this thing, probably on a regular basis. I just went and looked back at some previous invoices and this has been replaced and this chain catcher has been severed off before. So that's new. Okay, so it's here for a no starting issue. Let's find out why it's not starting. So 271s do not have a decompression valve. It's not Mtronic. I can't plug it in for data. Hmm. Something doesn't feel right about this. Let's check his fuel, see if there's fuel in it. And then we'll pop over to the door and pull it over and see what happens. There's lots of fuel in it. Maybe we'll just dump it out and have a look at it. Looks a little murky from where I'm standing. Hey, I just seen chunks fall out of there.
I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to show you closer if you can't. So this might be award winning here. That's water. That's fuel. And there is something round that fell out of that fuel tank. I don't know what it is. I don't know if you can see it. Well, that's bad. So I think we've figured out one reason why this saw won't start. Maybe there's some other reasons too. Okay, we're going to dig a little deeper, pull this top cover off, pull the plug out and have a look down in there. This is bad. Potentially catastrophic for this saw. I don't have a good feeling about this, but let's keep going and find out. So the air filter looks like he probably cleans it. Looks like he does do some cleaning here. I've seen some air filters come off these saws just completely packed. And like it's dirty, but that's, that's not, uh, it's not terrible. So let's pull the spark plug out of this and have a look at it. And we'll take a look down into the cylinder. Look at that. The choke. Just notice this. The choke rod is not hooked up. So there's reason number two why it won't start. So we got water in the tank and the choke not working. That's just oily water on that spark plug. That's maybe why when I pulled, when I tried to pull this out, the way it acted, it was trying to compress water. Maybe this saw is going to be fine. Maybe, maybe he put some old watery fuel in the tank and then somehow his choke became detached and maybe the choke saved the day. We're going to find out. I'll grab my camera. Let's have a quick look down in there and see what we can find. Down the hole we go. Well, it's a bunch of carbon sitting there on top of the piston. The cylinder wall actually looks fine. When I seen that watery fuel come out of that tank, I didn't think this was going to end well. It's all water. So, I know I could throw a fresh plug in this, put some fresh fuel in it, and I could go over and see if it would run. But there's water in the tank, water in the fuel filter, water in the fuel line. There's water in the carburetor. I don't know how long this thing's been sitting like this. It could have been sitting like this all summer. The saw, the, it's not fried. I don't want to fry it. If this was my chainsaw, if this was my personal chainsaw, before I started this thing, I would get all of the water out of the fuel system. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, step one here. I'm going to pull the fuel filter out of this tank. These are a handy little tool. I bought this from steel. Looks like a clothes hanger. Probably could make one out of a clothes hanger if you wanted to.
The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shove a shop rag down in the fuel tank and that'll soak up all the water droplets that are left over in the bottom there. That can soak up while I move on to the next step. Those absorb really well. That'll get every drop out of there. Okay, next, let's take the carburetor off the saw. Okay, two eight mils holding this on. I'm weirded out as to why this was off. Okay, so I just pried, there's a peg there and a peg on this side. I just used this tool and I pried them both out. Just pull this off to the side here so we have access to the carburetor. Choke rod, get that out of the way. Carburetor is off. At the intake there, you can see the water sitting there. Water at the spark plug hole. Water everywhere. Right, get the saw out of the way. So first thing I'm going to go over and just give this curb an external cleanup. I'll be right back. Let's take a closer look. Let's remove the pump side of the carburetor first. Phillips. So as expected, there's water droplets everywhere. I don't see any corrosion on this side though, so that's a good sign. Okay, let's pull the metering side off and have a look. Just get those out of the way. Same tool. Someone on here once told me not to hold the carb in my hand. If the screwdriver slipped, and you were holding this in your hand, you could put the screwdriver right through your hands. So I'm practicing leaving the curb <clears throat> on the workbench. The greasy shop rag has a beautiful little carburetor stand. I need to get myself one of those. Maybe my husband can make me one. First time I ever seen him use that little stand. I've wanted one ever since. Stop talking here and concentrate on my job. So there's the metering side diaphragm. Let's peel this off and have a look underneath. So underneath that diaphragm, 
I don't see any rust. So there's a good chance that maybe last week he poured that watery fuel in it. It wouldn't start and he brought it over. If that watery fuel had sat in here for an extended period of time, you would start seeing rust and, and uh, corrosion. So that's good. We can uh, probably just clean this thing back up and uh, get this thing running. If it'd been in, if water had sat in here long enough, he'd be looking at replacing this whole carburetor. I'm gonna pop over to my computer and see if I have a carb kit for this. So I'll be right back. A few minutes ago, I was speaking about the Greasy Shop Rigs carburetor stand. If you haven't seen him, he's on YouTube. Just look up the Greasy Shop Rig. If you like chainsaw, two-stroke content, he's got all kinds of it on there. All right, I'm back. Guess what? I have the diaphragm gasket kit for this carburetor. Let's get this carb cleaned up, replace these diaphragms, and get this thing back together. Okay, this carb has been cleaned and rebuilt with that kit. If you want to see more in depth on the cleaning and rebuilding, I did a video on a steel MS 291, which is very close to the same saw as this 271. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. You can click on it and watch it if you want to see more in depth about this. Let's pull our rag out of there. That did a pretty good job soaking, soaking stuff up. Let me just have a look down in there. Yeah, bone dry. All that water, every drop of water is out of there. I blew air through the fuel line into the tank. So all the water droplets in the fuel line went into the tank and I soaked them up with that rag. So our tank is cleaned out, our line is cleaned out, our fuel filter, we took it off. So we're going to put a new fuel filter on before we start this saw. Something interesting here. So there's a brand new fuel filter. And here's the fuel filter that I took out of the tank. This fuel filter was brand new this year, earlier this year, maybe let's say five or six months ago. What a color difference. I wonder if the water took the color out of it. I don't know. Anyways, that's interesting. Maybe there's a memo about this that I missed. Okay, so let's recap here. The tank is cleaned out and dry. The fuel line has been blown out. The carburetor has been cleaned and rebuilt. I've pulled the saw over upside down probably a hundred times. I've got every single drop of water I possibly can out of it. I've blown air through the intake and through the spark plug hole. I've done my very best to get all the water out of this thing. So let's put it back together. See what we can do here. Now, if this was like a still 044 or something, and it was my personal chainsaw, I would tear this saw down into 500 pieces and get every drop of water out of the thing. But this is a 271 and the customer was kind of like, I don't want to spend a lot of money. So we're not going to tear this thing down, but we have got, I would say 99% of the water out of it. Let's install that new fuel filter. carb back on. A 
carbs back on. Now let's fight this intake back on. I love a good fight. I love this design. It's not as good as the older ones. I do prefer actually working on older saws, but I have to work on all of them. Let's not forget our choke rod. So this side goes on the carburetor and that side locks down into and that's and that's why we found it off is because that piece of plastic is just wore right out this thing's probably been choked 10,000 times and that's all loosey goosey I'll probably have to order this piece and replace it I don't have it here I don't have a new one maybe I can pinch this I don't know it's plastic I'll have to see if I can do something with this it's amazing that this fell off this saw wouldn't choke for him and it wouldn't start and it's a good thing it wouldn't start because of that fuel he had in it this probably saved this chainsaw just give this a little pinch There it, it did snap down into it. Okay. Reinstall the nuts. New spark plug, BPMR7A. Yes, I checked the gap. put some fresh fuel in it the non watery type while I'm standing here we'll just check the bar oil quick and then we'll go over to the door full to the top of bar oil So if this thing runs for us, we'll also verify that it's oiling. This guy seems to have some serious bar and chain issues. So it just makes you wonder if maybe he doesn't have a oiling issue. Let's go over to the door. I'll see you there.
definitely oiling. The saw is dripping with happiness. Okay, so this 271 seems to run pretty good. There's a few things that he's going to need. He's going to need a new brake handle. He's going to need an operator presence lever. And he should replace this uh, master control lever. My little repair isn't a permanent fix. It's a good thing that this choke fell off because, I mean, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have ran on this. But if he would have noticed this, dumped it out, put fresh gas in it, the water left over in the system, that's enough to lean the saw out. I'm curious how you end up with that much water in your fuel. I'm thinking it has to be his jerry can left outside in the rain with the lid off. Oh, this, I can't see why his saw would be sitting outside with the gas cap off. But that's extreme. Could he have bought it from a gas station like this? I'd like to think not, but I don't know anymore. I see so much water come in in, uh, in these saws. Not usually this much water, but I don't know. And, and there is something in the bottom there too. I may fish that out so I can see what that is. And we verified while it was running there that it is oiling no problem. So I think the case is closed on the MS-271 that won't start. We know why. He needs a few things. I was pretty sure this guy was leaving here with a brand new saw next week, but it turns out he's going to be leaving with his old 271. Sometimes I wonder if guys purposely break their saws so they can get a new one. I had a guy drop a saw off once and he was pretty sure it was done. And when I called him to tell him it was repairable, he was actually disappointed. He wanted a new saw and he had to have an excuse to give his wife to get a new saw. That happens with lawn tractors too, all the time. I have lots of chainsaws waiting in line. Let's get to it. Thank you so much for watching.